And joining me now is the mayor of St. Louis, Lida Krusen. Happy New Year. Thank you very much for being with us. Troubling and discouraging. Those were the words you used at Friday's news conference sure. after the new year got off to this violent start. I know from the emails that I get, people are frustrated. Some are scared. What's your message to them? Of course people are frustrated. All of these victims have families. All of them have moms and dads and, and aunts and uncles and kids. Uh, most of these victims know the perpetrators. These shootings are not random. Uh, that's what the police department tells us. There's a lot of in involvement, of course, with uh, drugs and guns and, and violence, which drives some of this. Retaliation drives it. Uh, that, that doesn't excuse it. That just explains it a bit. Um, let's talk about solutions. You have said you want the Missouri legislature to remove the city residency rule for right. all St. Louis employees, including police. Right. Explain how you think that will help. Well, first of all, our police department is the only police department in the whole region that must live within the jurisdiction that they serve. And so it limits the number of people that we have to hire, and particularly for folks who might already be a police officer somewhere else, but they're established in their neighborhood and they don't want to move. Now, the city of St. Louis has so many great neighborhoods to live in. I'm not concerned about allowing officers to live where they want. Most of us don't want to be told where to live. And so I think we're 130 police officers short. We hired 180 officers last year. We have 99 in the academy right now. That's not enough. Our police officers have to have competitive pay with St. Louis County, and they have to be able to live where they want. Um, St. Louis County, we have, they have officers who live in the city of St. Louis and work in St. Louis County. All right, so let me play devil's advocate for a second. City Treasurer Tasharo Jones tweeted this. Lifting the residency requirement isn't going to help. Our pay and benefits aren't comparable to similar jobs. Right. Police recruitment is down everywhere in the region. Instead of telling people where to live, how about we make the city a place that people want to move to? How do you respond to that? Well, I think she agrees with the comment. She said, don't tell people where to live. And of course, there are lots of great neighborhoods in the city to live in. In fact, our population in the city uh, for young people is on the rise. Uh, many more technology folks, many more folks that are looking for jobs choose to live in our neighborhoods. So uh, I don't think we need to tell people where to live. Uh, that's a little bit of backwards thinking there. Do you still have confidence in Police Chief John Hayden? I do. I do. John Hayden uh, is a very experienced uh, policeman. He's been around in over 30 years. Uh, he was in charge of uh, North Patrol, which is our, our two most violent areas. I do absolutely have confidence in John Hayden. All right, so let me get your response to the article in today's Post-Dispatch that crime data doesn't support the Hayden rectangle strategy. Mm -hmm. The seven square mile rectangle made up only 20% of all violent crime in the city according to crime stats. Well, John Hayden looked at this, Chief Hayden looked at it over five years, which is something that he did tell the, the Post-Dispatch, and he worked there for a number of years beforehand. I would take the um, the the judgment of the chief who's run that division in terms of where the violence is and violence in that rectangle was down i think about 23 percent and so uh it's easy to monday morning quarterback this kind of thing i i haven't seen what their statistics are but we know that north st louis and in particular that area is where a lot of the violent crime emanates from um how soon do you expect to see results from Cure Violence, which, as we've reported, it's seen results in other parts of the country. It has. How, how soon would we see results here in St. Louis? You know, I, it's not instant, of course. Many of the things that we're doing, which are summer jobs for kids, Cure Violence, affordable housing, uh, all of those things have to be done along with law enforcement. None of them are instant. But you know what? We didn't get to where we are now in the last one year, two years, or three years. We got here over the last several decades. And so I expect to see good results from Cure Violence. It's not an instant result. Can I ask you about your pilot program uh, involving mental health workers going out yes. with police? Tell me about that. Sure. So we call it Cops and Clinicians. It's a pilot program. This is the second pilot that we've run. 
So when an officer goes out and sees a family or an individual in distress and believes that they need additional services, health services, social services, then there's a clinician, social worker, who visits with that family, tries to connect them with the services that, th that they need. Because it, as we know, it's not all about law enforcement. But make no mistake about it, we need our law enforcement officers. We need to fill these 130 positions. We need to pay them competitively because folks that are perpetrating this violence have to be held accountable. And the, the mental health program, is that something that's funded? Or do you need more funds for we that? We need more funds for that. We're actually talking with the state about that. And we'll find some funds in our own budget this year for that. It's, it's a very important complement to law enforcement. So what's your next step as we sit here with all these killings very early in the new year? Right. Several steps. One, increase police officer pay. Two, lift that residency requirement. Implement cure violence. Continue to fund affordable housing. Uh, continue with the cops and clinicians. And give our officers the tools that they need to do their jobs. And also, it's not just about officers. We have to have prosecutors and judicial system, which also helps. We have to hold folks who commit violent crimes accountable. You recently pulled the plug on airport privatization. Mm -hmm. Now, some like this idea because it could cancel nearly $600 million in airport debt, right. bring billions of dollars possibly in net proceeds. But you said the process reached a fork in the road, right. and so you didn't want to move it forward. Explain what happened. Well, we were at a point in time where we had to decide whether or not we were going to issue the request for proposals. Um, I go to neighborhood meetings all the time. I talk to our residents. I talk to our businesses. I uh, talk to our institutions. Frankly, there just was not the support to continue on with this. And so that was the reason for the timing of not moving forward with it. Uh, had we gotten a proposal, it would have had to pass by the Board of Aldermen. It would have had to pass by the Board of ENA. There, there just wasn't the support out there, the airlines and the FAA. And I, I talked with, with the airlines as well, and there just wasn't the support to continue on. So you also heard that St. Louis County Executive Sam Page and St. Charles County Executive Steve Ellman have called for regional ownership and development mm -hmm. of Lambert. Where do you stand mm -hmm. on that? You know, I have not seen what they have in mind. Of course, I've read what's been in the paper and on the news. Uh, it's interesting. Let, let's see what they have in mind. All right, here's something that kind of flew under the radar. The city recently passed a, a solar-ready construction mandate. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what mm -hmm. that is? Well, it says if you build a new uh, building, I think it's five stories or under, um, you have to build the electricity or up to the roof to where you'd be able to install solar panels if you wanted to in the future. So it's really building with solar in mind. And. And the reason for that is just because this is the direction we're heading with, with what, what we're dealing with in climate change? Well, the reason for that is climate change and how we, we, I think we all know that we need to move to renewable sources of energy. And so when you have a building code, you want to, folks to think ahead just a little bit. When you think about this job that you took on, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm just wondering because the violence is what gets the headlines. Mm -hmm. What are the things that when you put your head on the pillow every night that you think, yeah, that's working, that's working, that's working? You know, there is a tremendous amount of momentum in our city. Almost $10 billion worth of recently completed or under construction projects. And when you think about what's happened from the arch uh, on out to Soldiers Memorial, to Cortex, to the new hospital on South Grand, to NGA, on at Jefferson and Cass, $1.7 billion that we broke ground on. The whole geospatial cluster of businesses that are here now, we have 27,000 employees working in that geospatial cluster now. Uh, I think there's a, a lot of good momentum in St. Louis and we try to facilitate that. We try to help make that happen. Squares renew, uh, renovating the building at 900 North Tucker. There's a, there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm and a lot of positive things happening in the city of St. Louis. So, uh, mayor runs for re-election next year. Uh, is that something yep. you're going to do? 2021. March 2021 is the, uh, is the primary. <laughs> and? I oh, mean, absolutely. Yeah. I, I believe I've already said that, but yes, absolutely. All right. Mayor Crewson, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you, Mike. it. That's Appreciate it. Mayor Lida Crewson, and we'll be right back.